Hello students. In this video, I'm going to use Gaussian elimination to reduce a system of equations down to a row reduced echelon form. So the first thing I'm going to do is write the system as an augmented matrix. Now I'm assuming that you already know how to convert a system to an augmented matrix and then how to perform elementary row operations. If you don't know how to do that, then I suggest you check out some videos that cover that material before proceeding to this one. Now in this problem, you're going to see that we will end up with a free parameter because this system will have an infinite number of solutions. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's just follow the path of elementary row operations. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick that 3 as my pivot. Now, some people like to convert that 3 to a 1 uh, immediately, or they like to choose the largest number to be the pivot. I'm just going to proceed with a naive Gaussian elimination algorithm, and that means I'm just going to start in the upper left-hand corner and work my way down to the bottom right-hand corner in a systematic fashion. So I picked that 3 to be my first pivot. Now, to eliminate that 6, I have to multiply that 3 by minus 2, and add it to that 6. So once I do that to one part of the equation, I have to do it to all the subsequent parts of the equation to maintain equality. So I have to add minus 2 times row 1 to all of row 2. So that's what this statement is telling me. I'm going to take r2 minus 2 times r1 and replace r2 in its entirety with that result. So when I do that, I end up with a 0, minus 16, minus 2, minus 2. Just follow the operations. Minus 2 times 3 is minus 6, plus 6 is 0. Minus 2 times 4 is minus 8. Minus 8 is minus 16. Minus 2 times 3 is minus 6, plus 4 is minus 2. Minus 2 times 3 is minus 6, plus 4 is minus 2. All right, now I'll proceed a little bit more quickly as I do the elementary row operations. The next one is I will choose, I will stay on this minus 3 and I will choose to eliminate this 9. So I'm going to multiply this 3 by minus 3. So that means I'm going to multiply all of row 1 by minus 3. And I'm going to add it to row 3 and then replace row 3 with the final result because I have to do it to the entire entirety of row 3. So if I do that, you just perform the operations as I did previously, and you'll get this result. 0, minus 16, minus 2, minus 2. Now, I'm going to choose this minus 16 to be my pivot. And again, uh, some people might want to divide that minus 16 by minus 16. But look, I see that this is a minus 16 below here. So I know that if I just add these two rows together, I will get a 0, and I'll eliminate this entry here. Another thing you could consider when writing this, and sometimes you'll see this, especially in numeric algorithms, is you'll see it written as R3 minus minus 1 R2. Okay, so keep that in mind. I decided to just go with the shorthand of writing this as R3 plus R2 replacing R3. All right, so notice that if we just add these two rows together, we um, see that both these rows are this, they have the same entry, so we just get zeros in all the bottom row. That means we expect there to be infinitely many solutions. This is a consistent system. I don't have a non-zero entry on the right-hand side, so I don't have something that is zero equal to something that is non-zero. If that were the case, I would have an inconsistent system, and we could stop here and say that there's no solution to the system. But because I have all zeros in the bottom row, I'm going to expect infinitely many solutions. So that means that one of these parameters is going to be a free parameter. If your head is swimming a little bit right now with those details, just hold on and um, you'll see what I'm talking about as I produce the solution. Right now, just hang on and follow along with the, with the uh, row reduced echelon form. Okay, But I just wanted to show you what to anticipate at this point. All right, so this part of the matrix is in, is in a form that we call upper triangular. So you notice that I've been starting from the upper left and working down to the right. I'm going to do that for one more step. And then once I'm 
once I get it into upper triangular form, I'm going to start my elimination upwards. I don't do that until I get the matrix down to upper triangular form. So you should always be working in a systematic fashion down to the right, down to the right, down to the right. Don't haphazardly eliminate things. That's a very common mistake. Students will see something like, um, you know, they'll see this four here and they'll try to eliminate that right away or they'll start working upwards earlier in the, in the system. No, start from the upper left and work down to the right. Okay, so now that I have this in upper triangular form, I see this minus 16 over here. Now I'm gonna multiply this by a minus 1 16th to, make, to turn this into a one. So I'm already going into converting this augmented matrix into row reduced echelon form. This is upper triangular form. Now I'm working from this step forward to get, to get this matrix down to row reduced echelon form. So if I multiply this entire row by minus 1 16th, I'll get one, one eighth, one eighth, right? Because minus two over minus 16 is one eighth. Now that I have that one in the entry there, that two, two entry, I'm going to eliminate this four. And I do that by taking, now notice now I'm working upward. So it's going to be row one is going to get replaced by minus four times row two. So I multiply everything in row two by minus four and I add it to row one and I replace row one. When I do that, I get minus four plus four is zero. Minus four over eight is minus one half. Three minus one half is five halves because that's six halves minus one half is five halves. Similarly, I get a five halves here. Now I have this matrix down here. This isn't quite row reduced echelon form because I have a three in this first entry here. I need to convert that three to a one. So I'm gonna multiply that entry by a one third and when I multiply this entire, if I'm gonna multiply that entry by one third, I have to multiply the entire row by one third. So I get a one, zero, five, six, five, six. Now, this matrix, this augmented matrix is in row reduced echelon form, RREF for short. Sometimes if you're asked to just convert this matrix to RREF, then you'd be done with the problem at this point. I'm gonna to continue to solve the problem. And now I'm gonna discuss this aspect where we have infinitely many solutions and we're going to end up with a free parameter. So now I'm going to take this augmented matrix and I'm going to convert it back to a linear system. So notice that the first column corresponds to the variable x, the second column corresponds to the variable y, the third column corresponds to the variable z. Now if I just read off this top row here, I see that x there's a zero y here, and then I have a five, six z is equal to five, six. So in other words, I have x plus five, six z is equal to five, six. Similarly, I have y plus one eighth z is equal to, right, this bar is where the equal sign is, one eighth. So I have these two equations. Now notice that z shows up in both of these equations. So I can solve for x, so, yes, I can solve for x, and then I can solve for y by putting the z on the other side of the equation. And now you can see that z is going to be our free parameter because x is going to depend on z and y is also going to depend on z. Now notice that we had one row of zeros since we had one row of zeros, that indicates to me that we're gonna have one free parameter. Sometimes you'll end up with two rows of zeros, you're gonna end up with two free parameters, and so on and so forth. In this case, we have one free parameter. Sometimes this will be all you need for your solution. So you can just, you have to make sure that you're clear on what your homework is asking you, um, what the problem is asking you when you give your solution, what your professor is asking you when they want the form of the solution. They may say, just write it in terms of the um, free parameter, uh, one of the other variables, and this would be good enough. You'd be done with the problem. You'd say Z is your free parameter, and then you'd write this as your solution.